Our next speaker is Professor Andrea Rinaldo from EPFL and from the University of Padua. Andrea's extraordinary career started from the early 80s, covering a diverse range of topics in more than 300 publications. Just to illustrate the breadth of his interests, here are the titles of the two books he co-authored, Fractal River Basins, Chance and Self-Organization, and River Networks as Ecological Corridors, Species, Populations, Pathogens. Andrea, together with the late Ignacio Rodriguez Iturbe, is considered to be founder of the new discipline of eco-hydrology, the interplay between ecology and hydrology. He will talk about Guidon's contributions to the formulation of hydraulic transport by groundwater flow and in catchments. Andrea, please. And as you easily realize, um, I am an intruder here. And, but um, hopefully justified, I'm very pleased by this invitation of you know, and, um, and Gideon. For, I'm speaking for myself, of course, for deep personal affection that ties me. It's been tying us for like 35 plus years and a deep admiration for the scientists, for the academic values of what you express and for the, and for the savage clarity as dubbing a, what the philosopher said in, in Italy once uh, of your work and the extraordinary work that you have produced. So I, I'll be taking bits and pieces sideways from, from uh, and with an excuse to try to speak of what uh, I hope, I think, Gideon will do next, uh, in fact. And um, it would be, even if you see that this picture which I took from the groundwater paper, the, 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 the brief uh, uh, history of uh, Gideon's own life written by himself, young Gideon lecturing in Haifa, and this was shown too, etc. It's, it's um, you see the intensity, you see something which is absolutely him, in fact. And, um, and um, that's what I'd be up of doing. I think this goes up, okay. So let me start from, um, what uh, was a starting point uh, of um, getting close to war? Because at a certain point, it was obvious you needed to understand what Professor Dagan had done. And, uh, and um, so the first thing that we took in our hands, and Alberto Bellin was then, now a distinguished colleague in Trento, who was then uh, a student, etc. we said, okay, let's take this. It's the annual review for mechanics, a very prestigious outcome. In fact, it's, a very, it's an invited review, etc. It's a long paper, etc. We said, okay, now we have to really understand that. So we undertook of taking line by line the excruciating uh, 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 ability that uh, Gideon alone, as you see, as in many fundamental papers, in fact, was showing. And, um, and we wanted to understand that down to details. And that took quite a while. Again, the savage clarity, as we said. And uh, some of the results, in fact, in, in even the structure, the clarity of the thinking of the master, in fact, it was already a famous paper. Once you're going to the annual review of the mechanics, I mean, you've been through like, like 10, 15 classic papers in the Journal of Free Mechanics, which is a very prestigious outlet. Uh, I don't care about uh, modern measures of academic quality. Uh, if you measure by impact factors of the journals, this is a hell of an important journal, I and mean, I did not matter what the impact factor is. And um, what uh, the thing does is it was starting presenting the importance of the subject. Well, in Israel, it's, it's obvious, of course, the importance of that. And realization that um, or heterogeneity was absolutely crucial for understanding. It was a missing point, a patching up of results of different nature, et cetera. So the first thing was uh, this um, figure in which he was examining, it was taken from another uh, important scientist of the field, Lynn Gelhardt from MIT. And uh, it was a, an analysis of uh, what uh, Aldo was showing earlier. This results about um, the dispersivity. It's a length which is characteristic of the process. And it was essentially showing that whoever tried to do some field observations in the field was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger results. Meaning, whatever you do in terms of a classic interpretation of the dispersion thing simply doesn't work. It doesn't go to a to a to the constant ratio that uh, the constant value that should have been observed in there, and so uh, and you've seen this picture, well, sort of this picture. This is still, still taken from the same annual review paper, and so essentially, what you go back to uh, to something which Vladimir, in fact, has been mentioning, in fact, uh, and then uh, and uh, and then uh, uh, um, uh, Aldo as well, and refers to a, a guy comparable uh, in importance to Guinness where G. I. Taylor. One of his heroes, in fact. Uh, the paper continues by diffusion, uh, a, a dif diffusion by continuous movements. In fact, it's a 1922 paper, still cited, I don't know, 
tens of hundreds of times. I, I think I checked. It was about 50 citations last year. I mean, it was published in 1922, in fact. And in there, what you see is that this kind of frozen turbulence which you have in a system in which you start inching towards a description of a heterogeneity, the characterization of the heterogeneity field, and you characterize in the model which is important, and you get into what, uh, in fact, was becoming fundamental. How do you characterize the, the heterogeneity which you see everywhere whenever you take a picture of any subsurface formation? And um, so that's what you do. You study advection, you study diffusion, you see molecular diffusion of some kind. You get the, the, the in a nutshell, the what you call hydrodynamic dispersion, is how gradients of velocity generated by the, by the vagaries of nature, in fact, generate the bigger and bigger things and explain what you explain, what you, what you have seen in, 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 uh, in, in the experiments that were popping out at that time. And Aldo, and I'm repeating the same thing, but it's still taken from the same paper, in fact, is... Uh, what was fantastic in there, let me take a small detour then, on the theory of models, in fact. Um, this is an analytical results, again, the savage clarity, and the phenomenal uh, synthesis that was proposed by this analytical solution. So essentially, you characterize now uh, a stationary velocity as a random space function uh, generated by something which is measurable, and that's uh, characterized by features like the macro scale, as it is called in turbulence, but it is the scale of heterogeneity the integral scale. And what is dispersivity in this case? We have the asymptotic value of the, of the longitudinal dispersion coefficient is the variability condensed by the, uh, by the variance of log conductivity times the integral scale, a very physical quantity. We're talking about heterogeneity of this size, We're talking about heterogeneity of 10 meters or 100 meters or something, times the mean velocity of a field. And the results were done by, by Freiberg, the guys who carried out the Borden site experiment in Canada, which was revealing at the time it was huge and it was doing it was a gigantic effort to know how many cubic uh, cubic meters of water were injected or large enough to get rid of certain approaches something which in Gideon's sophisticated language could be the ergodicity problem because it was a huge thing you had a huge things to average on and to see the realization of the system so you get compared analytical results for the longitudinal dispersion of the transfer of the space so essentially you're seeing how this plume oblates as it moves along the main flow, and it distorts in a super predictable manner. And uh, Gideon doesn't like fitting. He prefers calibration, perhaps. But what is interesting in this case, well, um, as engineers, we tend to have a good feeling about uh, what is the theory of models. So as was said before about von Neumann, I think, uh, uh, we know whether the result is reliable or not. We can actually have a Bayesian estimator to see whether you're talking about something which you can really define as a properly calibrated thing, et cetera. And what happened in this case is that once you calibrated, I mean, the analytical solution fitted, or whatever you want to call it, on the data, and the values predicted by Gideon, in fact, by, uh, by using those quantities uh, directly from the experimental measurements, the match was perfect, or nearly perfect, beyond. And so it was a fantastic result, which, uh, those condensed then, and, and Aldo showed the picture, it's a fantastic book. I saw it in the making. In fact, Gideon, while it was about to be published, he sent me a, a part to read. I'm very, I was very proud, in fact, of having the chance of, of reading it. Uh, uh, by the way, if you look at the tour about these publishing houses are, are peculiar. That's why they have something like 40% of the of of revenues of what they do. He did everything. He typed everything. He typed the math in a very a funny uh, <laughs> word processor, which was not late at the time, and the math was very heavy. So it was a, an admirable work, etc. And the way it was written, the methodological part, the part in which you start talking about the random functions that properly explain with, with the kind of, again, savage clarity and exacting need for defining what you need to know about the proper mathematics and the proper tools of thing, the first part. And then moving on to the different things, including what I'll be reaching at now. But that landed Gideon, the most prestigious prize ever seen in 1998, the Stockholm Water Prize, by far the most important recognition, despite a few choices that were done at, uh, later on, remains unmatched, etc. also because of the beauty of a, of a ceremony. What I'm trying to think, what's going to be, what has been done moving from that after the Stockholm, in fact, is something quite interesting. And done by, by the people you heard before me, in fact, uh, with Vladimir, 
and with Aldo, something started out in, in the different thing, in the formulation of transport by travel time distributions, which is neither Eulerian nor Lagrangian, if you want, but essentially you define a compliance surface, which is something which is unavoidable in certain cases. It is essentially taking you measure, you start and you get this uh, kind of random wind, turbulent wind pushing the particles, etc., moving plumes into a thing, and you essentially track the time in which you hit the surface. Now, it's called the formulation of transport by travel time distribution. It's beautifully explained in Gideon's book. Um, it's, it's a very robust indicator. It's a very, it's a single curve, condensates the entire heterogeneity of the environment. So it started through the same machinery, the same machinery of fluid mechanics, the federating power of fluid mechanics, studying particle-particle correlations and how they, um, they, set, they are set apart by the flow and measured by the timing with the heat a compliant surface. We call it trapping surface because it do not permit the power then to return. That's something on which we may discuss later on. And that was done. And, um, and um, so essentially what you have, you have two planes. It's uh, taken, uh, I, I inverted, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be a, a previous slide and I apologize for that. But so essentially what you have, you have a circle. You essentially are working, and that's what I'd be aiming at uh, in, the, in the rest of the talk. Essentially you're talking about stationary fields and in fluid mechanics, and those of you that are exposed to that know that one thing is that in steady state, everything collapses into the same thing. Uh, streamlines, streak lines, trajectories, they are all the same. Once you get into a system, and that's what I hope will be next, uh, you get in unsteady state conditions that things change completely because streamlines and trajectories do not coincide and you have to take into account something else. But um, this is interesting work that was at the closure thing by uh, by Vladimir, by Aldo, and by Gideon, um, in which they're using MIM-CH in a sense, so that is this block, um, uh, this way of upscaling, in fact, uh, uh, complicated and highly heterogeneous things, so you don't have the limitations of the original thing, which, by the way, the limitations as characterized by the variance of log conductivity field were supposed to be small. But then, then what Alberto Billing showed for his PhD thesis is that, is that well, uh, it works even for, I mean, you do it numerically and you check the solution, it stays good for a, a hell of a long, uh, a long time. It's a log besides. So essentially what you have here, and that's a point, is talking about travel time distribution, which you add a new component. So you see the travel time is seen as, con as a measure of the contact time between fixed and mobile phases into things. So it's the engine for mass transfer. So it was an idea, so transform, take what haven't landed uh, Gideon the Stockholm Water Prize, could be extended to a system in which uh, um, you do have, in fact, uh, a reactivity. So essentially, along the path, those particles that move in the system, that's important for pollution for a number of counts. It could be a, a reversible reaction, like the one in which you have like simple decay, or a reversible reaction of the types that today to me, tomorrow to you, right? You linearize and make it simple, and that's what it is. And this is a beautiful paper by Vladimir and Gideon, beautiful paper indeed, uh, published in the, in the Journal of Fuel Mechanics, which we studied also in great detail. They are complicated technical papers. They take a hell of a lot of time. And, um, and the results are equally interesting. In this case, you don't get the analytical solution, for instance, for the thing, but you do have the analytical solution for the moments. In this the first moment, um, the, uh, the mean, in fact, and the variance of the distributions compared in the system in which you essentially, once you have a reactivity and you compare to data, in this case, whether fitted or not, and you see that in reality, you can characterize how much you gain or how much you, 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 you lose into a system. So you get heavily into using the entire machinery that you have seen uh, for characterizing, in fact, uh, a, 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 a system in which you do have two, I mean, realistic, say, pollution effects. And one of the results which I quote again from their paper, et cetera, is something which for correction to first order, which is something I like, this is beta two, is a coefficient which corrects, in fact, the, uh, the first order solution. And to me, and, and, and uh, if you look at that from a practical viewpoint, you see the power of the early discoveries, in fact, of Gideon discoveries with the, in the low order uh, approximation are uh, really amazing. And that's what I think should be the next uh, Gideon Dagan, in fact. Uh, and it's moving on to different things. It was promised in the, in the title, talking about the catchment. Why the catchment is so important? The catchment is control volume, which is uh, bigger in a sense and broader and encompassing more of an ideology than the one you have in, um, 
in subsurface knowledge itself. Here's the Hubbard Brook, which is a very important term. So in, in a sense, if you take as a control volume, an entire thing which should have something which happens in the surface, uh, as, as uh, it was said, I think, by Aldo in his presentation at the G90 yesterday, um, it's, it's, okay, it's the same water, right? So there's got to be a way of taking them um, uh, into account together. So the advantage of having um, these things, you have long time series, for instance, of stream flows and of uh, uh, particular data which you have in the surface hydrology, in fact, connected to one. And um, see, in subsurface hydrology, theory is necessary, as written famously in, 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 one, in the book of Gideon, because, I mean, measures are super expensive, they take a hell of a long time, so there's no surrogates of theory, right? In, in, in surface hydrology, you do have a quicker response and you have a better way of measuring things, etc. And it's, it's a pleasure for me to mention, and, uh, and <laughs> well, uh, to me, there are two phases of results which are independent, although the later results in surface hydrology, in fact, were aware of the contributions by Gideon. And, and um, if I may, I've, I've had uh, Professor David Harel talking about uh, Auden, a poet, and if I may describe the approach taken by my friend Inácio Rodríguez de Turbe, uh, who passed away recently, sadly, uh, who was a good friend of Gideon, in fact. If, um, to describe his approach, um, I would like to quote Auden uh, by heart. I know it should be relatively accurate. And in his, <laughs> his poem, Archaeology, he said that knowledge may have its purposes, but guessing is always more fun than knowing. Am I right? <laughs> so, in that, I had, a, in that I had an, an audience of phenomenal guy in, 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 in that archaeology, which has quite interesting quotes too. But in that, I had the feeling, etc. And, and the idea, this thing, which was main results of a theory of transport by time time distribution, but is is the rate of uh, is the mass is proportional to concentrations, and the fluxes are proportional to the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the concentration is proportional. The mean concentration is proportional to the PDF of the travel time. And, they, and it's characterized by the mass flux at the outcome of a section. So the uh, instantaneous uni, uh, geomorphologic hydrograph thing, and it, 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 it's an intuition as early as 1979 by Ignacio Rodriguez, was essentially saying that you have a system in which you have a travel time, then a flux, and you can, in a geomorphological sense, you can compose these things by simply assuming mild assumption of uh, uh, statistical independence, you simply take convolutions of these things. So you can describe the general response of a system. Now, uh, so you say, when well, don't you take the savage clarity of, uh, of Gideon's approach for the subsurface, should then find a way to cope with the different grammar, the catchment grammar, the jargon, the tools, and the different structures. So we'll be talking about rainfall injections, which are varied and erratic in space and time. You're talking about temperatures, you're talking about snow accumulations, you're talking about isotopes, essentially, stable isotopes of, um, of uh, hydrogen, in fact, and, 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 uh, and oxygen, in fact, delta O eating, et cetera, the meteoric water line, et cetera, through which you can actually test the age that the water spends at the control volume, which is interesting because age, in fact, um, is not travel time. So essentially, you have a system in which you do have a residence time, that is the particle, how long particles injected through rain uh, have been into the control volume, surface, subsurface, we don't care. And then um, they become transit times of travel time when they hit the compliance surface. But here you have two. You have the stream flow which you receive, and you do have evapotranspiration because plants, in fact, selectively cherry pick ages from the control volume, which cannot, cannot become uh, in fact, uh, travel time, the ones you measure at the closure. So, in brief, uh, what happens is that you're talking about fluid mechanics, which is deeply, inherently unsteady, in which you have complications. And age distributions must be something jagged of this kind, in which you have fraction of younger waters, that is something that you like, uh, like in this case, you have maybe young water next to the surface, and you have deeper water, and it, the deeper down you go, the longer particles have been into the control, into the transport volume, thereby with the possible biogeochemical implication of all kinds. And that's the type of distribution which you have, in fact, in the system. What is also interesting is that, um, uh, I mean, we don't invent anything. If you look what demographers knew since 100 years, uh, at McCormack and Van Foster's, it's huge, in fact, said that if you look at the 
have a, you can have a perfect analogy of what happens with demography. For instance, if you look at the resident populations in Switzerland, which is an exercise that was carried out by, by a few guys in the thing, et cetera. So resident population has a distribution of age of this kind, which changes in time, which is unsteady. And you do look at these, and they, in, if the fluxes which you have are equivalent to rainfall, if you can, immigration in one sense, and immigration is the, oops, of the outlet that you have. Well, making it long story short. So essentially what you have, if you label as colors um, a certain composition of the thing, now we do have a system in which you have to characterize the age of the particles of the state of the control volume. Why this is relevant to the discussion? Because what happens now, the approach that uses the so-called storage sampling functions, it tells you that the system vegetation, a, a, a wide and diverse assemblage of vegetation, picks up and cherry picks particles and eliminates ages that they suck up and they put in the atmosphere. So they cannot become travel times. So essentially, time is up, and I'll be going to the end. Long story short, I think that this is um, the next frontier in which you transform the approach that you have done in steady state into unsteady state by having a rational, savage clarity quality evaluation of a, of a story sampling functions. We right now are empirical. And um, I cannot uh, uh, fail to mention before I'm closing, I'm, I'm getting to my closure, et cetera. This is a ceremony, one of the beautiful awards that, uh, that Gideon collected. This was an honorary degree uh, in Naples. I cannot fail to mention the dry humor that uh, Gideon shows in many occasions. You probably have seen these. Infidels should be burned by the stakes. You remember that, Gideon, right? Infidels, and that's where we are. So I'm coming to my conclusion. My conclusion is simply, I'm really still taking this picture, which was in, uh, in the groundwater paper. So I'm talking about ourselves, and we'll be talking about, um, uh, in the words of, um, of an Italian writer, in fact, who said that when, and we said, I wrote those pages, a respectable age, age as you easily deduce from the tone. It is an age in which few resist the temptation to look back striving to give things a duration that do not have a per se. But the title is Servabo, we will conserve. We will conserve a lesson anyhow beyond us to the future generations of the next one. So, um, happy 90th birthday, Gideon, with love and admiration. <laughs>